Live from Soho, New York City, it's Wearable Electronics with Becky Stern. That's me. Hey, everybody. Welcome to our live show. Every week we talk about wearable electronics. We answer your questions. We look at some cool stuff, show you how it works. And um, it's the pre-Thanksgiving show. Yes. This What's what, on today's show? On today's show, we've got a discount code. That's right. Save in bucks. Induction is the code. Expires tonight, 11.27, 11.59 p.m. Induction, 10% off everything in the Adafruit store in the wearables and Flores category. We got Wearable Wednesday. We're going to talk about a cool new project, some stuff I did last weekend, and other wearable things. Material Spotlight. Where we go over a material, what it does, how it behaves, how you might use it. Component of the week. Celebrate a component of, of this week. Yeah. And question and answers. You got questions, Becky has answers. All that and more on Wearable Electronics with Becky Stern. If you have questions right. during the show, you can post them up in the comments and we'll save them for next week. How it works is I pick some questions, load them up for the show, and then uh, put them in this handy giveaway basket for later. So if you ask a good question, we only answer a couple questions per show, you have a really yep. good chance of winning a prize. So um, you can ask them here in the YouTube comments or on Google Plus or Facebook or in the Adafruit forums. Yeah. You have a very good chance of winning because we only answer like, you know, four or five questions. So. Yeah, every week. So All you have to do ask is now. ask to win. And well, and you get your question answered too, which is fun. Okay. We're gonna go uh, yeah. right in, right? Yeah, first up, um, just a reminder, the code is induction, expires tonight. Um one fifty nine PM. Later. Yeah, induction. Why is it? Why is that? Um, one other programming note that we should mention, Adafruit now takes Bitcoin. And today Bitcoin is up to um, hundred bucks a coin. A thousand bucks a coin? I don't a know. Thousand. It's a lot. It's Probably a, lot. a thousand. It's a lot. If it was like nine hundred. It's going last crazy. Week. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, it, so like yeah. it's not the best time to spend your bi spend your bitcoins. <laughs> now now is the time, and so we started accepting bitcoins, and um, our customers really wanted to do it. So you can use that in conjunction with the code, induction. Conjunction induction. <laughs> What's bitcoin. your function? You can buy yeah. Raspberry Pis and then use them to mine bitcoins. Yeah, we had a, uh, a young person. They made a Bitcoin miner using the Adafruit tutorial, using Raspberry Pi, mined coins, and then spent them yesterday or the day before. That's pretty, pretty nice. cool. Okay. First, uh, Wearable Wednesday. It's Wednesday. It's time to talk about wearable things. Yeah. If you have been following the blog, every Wednesday we load up a really uh, great amount of fun posts. Um, this week I wanted to talk about my visit last weekend to the Adidas um, garment development facility outside of Philadelphia. That's right. I got so to visit. They, they have a whole lab devoted to like wearable electronics -y stuff because they have to put technology in clothing. Yeah, right? just um, like training garments for professional athletes basically even. Um, and also like the sports bra with the conductive fabric heart monitor, but yeah. but like a, um, a lab full of, it's basically for like pro soccer players, they do a bunch of stuff. And um, my buddy Bryce, who uh, I met speaking uh, with on a panel at iBeam earlier this year, mm -hmm. um, showed me around, it was very nice of him, and let me take pictures of some things. This, what we're looking at on the screen right now is Adidas' new smartwatch, okay. uh, which has GPS and heart rate monitoring. That's what you're seeing on the back here is a heart rate monitor that shines light through your skin and detects your heart rate while you run, um, and it can track like your your splits and your all kinds of like runners things. Okay. There'll be a picture of the front of it too. Runners things. Runners things yeah. pertaining to runners. Well, they're marketing have it. They're calling it like the My Run or the my, yeah. I don't know. They're calling it like the Runners Watch, and it's kind of silly because it's running a whole like Android build on it, and <laughs> and it's really comfortable and cool and well designed and the the feel of it's really nice. It yeah. has a touch screen and yeah. and like what they could be competing with like the Samsung and the Apple Watch yeah. if they want if they would just like open source their thing like people could turn their thing into Yeah. Well, you know, I went to the Samsung experience in New York. It's a thing that brands do. So you go in and it's it's intense and and uh, Lamore and I walked over and we wanted to see the watches and the screens they had. And the Samsung watch is, is really chunky. This one seems um, wearable. The Samsung one was, it was just, it was too big. This is pretty big, but I have really small wrists and you can see yeah. I found it pretty comfortable. Yeah, no, this one looks a lot smaller. Um, you know, it's always hard to tell what happens with battery life and everything, but yeah. that's the differences I've, I've seen so far. Mm. But we'll see, like wrist real estate is something we're interested here in Adafruit. Yeah, I've got, my wrist real estate right now is being taken up by my Fitbit that I'm like trying really hard to wear every day and I yeah. have a really hard time yeah. wearing any Every day, so. You need like a, a fit um, house arrest ankle anklet. Do they make those? What? Yeah, the, the house <laughs> arrest. The, 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 no, the, 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 the oh, house so I arrest. Can't get thing? it off. Yeah, you, just, you go to Fitbit headquarters. They they install it, <laughs> and then after ninety days, you get it off. Yeah, I liked the one yeah. that went in my pocket of my pants, but I kept washing it, which is of course a problem. We have some more pictures of the Adidas stuff. This right. shirt is um, got those heart rate. Yeah. Um, the see the. 
conductive fabric pads on it that wrap around the chest, like the, they go up the back and they clip in this like module snaps into the back of the jersey and sends the training info to the coach like in real time as the soccer players. And okay. so like they test all of the stuff there. They have like laundry cool. and a gym um, and a whole bunch of crazy equipment that yeah. I wasn't allowed to take pictures of that tests um, the different like properties of the yeah. of the garment because like their huge thing is durability, right? You yeah. want it to at least last a whole soccer season. Um, so that's cool. And then um, that shirt, or there's like another shirt that has this um, Bluetooth low energy reporting module um, okay. on the front. And you can see it's connected to the conductive fabric pads inside the shirt with snaps, and which is something snaps. we do too. Yeah, this looks like an Adafruit project. <laughs> <laughs> The old one uses the same, the old monitoring thing uses the same uh, technology as the polar heart rate. Yeah. So so uh, since I don't have an iPhone, so I don't have Bluetooth low energy device, no. uh, Bryce gave me one of the ones that, that'll work with our existing heart rate projects, oh, like cool. my brooch. Oh, great. So uh, I don't know. That's cool. OK. But I have a fun time, and it was neat. All right. You guys um, should check out their stuff. But it's so funny that it's only for sports. and. We think about so many other things besides sports. And, like I look at all this stuff and I'm like, oh, I could use it for this and this and this. And yeah, I kind of wish the wearable electronics for health and fitness took another thing into consideration. So in New York, maybe you only go a few miles a day, but it's such an intense few miles. Like it should, it'd be cool if it knew like, oh, you took the M today. It, like, oh my God, like you get extra points for that. Like, <laughs> every, like some days it's like, oh, like the AC was like completely a mess. Um, you get some extra points for that because at least you can earn it and just yeah. at the end of the year it's like how many subway miles you get like it'd be cool to have it as also um, city focused in addition to distance and, yeah. and some other things. My Fitbit um, does stairs which is the most important thing to me because I've got bad knees and but I want to make it um, it like rewards me it's like you got yeah you, you want like, to you want to stay low I want it to tell me yay you only climbed 10 flights of stairs today yeah. instead of like the typical like 30 which is way too many for yeah. me but I I yeah, but I, it tells me that. I, I think that's one of the cool things with these wearable ideas is people Seven. can go to Adafruit, experiment with flipping the opposite. Like when Pandora came out, um, it's not wearable, but one of the ideas that I first thought was, oh, I want a hate button. Like, yeah. you know, like never, <laughs> never, never, never play me a song like this again. Yeah. Or you like, like the opposite where it's like, don't ever, don't do this action. And like for some types of fitness, like keep me away from stairs. Don't want, like if I'm doing stairs, like. Scold you know, me. Scold me, no stairs. Yeah. All right, so you got some um, things that you wanted to show. We have some stuff in oh, the yeah, store. Oh, yeah, some new products in the store that are wearables related. This is a new kit from Anio Magic. It's this LED bracelet. Yeah. Um, it's pretty cool. You, um, we have a couple more pictures. Yeah. It has a neat little circuit board, coin cell batteries, made out of felt, perfect for tiny, tiny children. It's, um, it's, a, it's a little thing. Yeah. And then we got another photo here. So, like, my um, seven year old niece, hope she's not watching, might be getting this for Christmas. Really? <laughs> Okay, no one tell her. All right, uh, we also put in some Neo Pixel rings. A 24, a new one. 24 pixel yes. ring. So you'll remember the other one had, the smaller one had 16. We made a watch out of it. It's like Canadian time or something. Now you could make a real. It's Canadian time? <laughs> Is it like metric time that Swatch had? Yeah. yeah. Um, it's, fif it's 15 o'clock. So, yeah. It's 8 bit time. Yeah. Um, so now you have a big, we have a bigger ring, and I'm sure we'll have even, we have more rings in the works. Even. We do. We yeah. have more rings and more shapes. Yeah. And uh, we have a lot more um, interesting things with LEDs. Yeah. And, so these yeah. make great um, hair fastenators, brooches, backpack adornments. Like. Yeah. Use yeah. it for everything. Everything. There's a really cool art project that they use 200 of the NeoPixel rings. And they were sound reactive. It was nice. incredible. I'm going to make an upcoming project as a bangle bracelet with the NeoPixel rings. Oh, that's cool. It's going to be nice. And then, so uh, those are your product updates. Oh, yeah. and then this is um, a Manufacturing Monday picture that you took, Phil, of the Flora NeoPixels coming out of the solder reflow oven. Yeah, one of the things I like to do is run around the shop and take photos of what's going on here. And a lot of it is um, in action. So these are the NeoPixels coming out of the reflow oven. What a reflow oven does is it melts the components together, they're solder paste, and it's conductive paste, basically. And then it melts it at a certain temperature, holds it, and then it uh, releases it outside. And it's kind of like a big bagel tester. Yeah. You ever seen this? With, Don't, with uh, you, can, you can never put a bagel through there. I wanted uh, to yeah, so badly as, as tempting before as it we is. put any yeah. As tempting it. as it is, you can't. Um, and then uh, we'll burn your uh, I also take photos, if you look at the photo set, of other things around Adafruit. And, and the patterns that things make when you have stacks of them is really fun. Um, a long time ago, when I was um, living in Tokyo, there is a fish market, big famous fish market. And when you go there, you can actually find every color of the rainbow represented in fish. Delicious. Yeah, and they're all, and they're all so tasty that you can eat <laughs> breakfast there. Um, Lamore and I went there yeah. uh, to Tokyo and we, we, we ate there. Um, at the time, tourists were allowed, but they, they stopped doing that. Um, there's forklifts and then there were some bad tourists and everything. Right. So I don't think you can go there anymore, but they have those um. big, big 
chunks of tuna that are like ten thousand dollars that they're bidding on. So mm. all that all that stuff. But the the thing about electronics is it reminds me of of all those like wildlife and those things because we have different colored boards and right. circuit patterns. And patterns that emerge. So yeah. So check out the the boxes of components and all those things and you'll try you'll see probably photos every week it's one of the things yeah. we like to do here i also like to instagram photos like this too yeah when, whenever i was um the bathroom is on the complete other side of the office from my desk and whenever i go i try to remember to bring my phone because there's always something in fab worth it like yeah. there's always a pile of gemmas or a pile of something to take a picture of yeah. on my way to or from Okay, this is a classic setup shot. What is this, Becky? Oh, I don't know. It's <laughs> yeah. a mystery. What is it? This it's looks this like... week's project. Oh, okay. That's right. What is this week's project? This week's project is a, is a purse that charges your cell phone with induction. That's in handy. Yeah. Inductive charging coils. Install it in your bag. Install it on your shelf. And So anyone could modify an existing purse they have, mm -hmm. and they could set it up so when they put it on a shelf or the 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 desk or, or anything, it'll charge the things inside the bag. Yep. That's crazy talk. Crazy talk. Video, wireless charging. Video or it didn't happen. Oh, roll the video, please. Oh, okay, I guess it happened. Does it feel like you're charging your phone constantly? Build a wireless charger into your purse so that your phone is safely stowed and slurping up electrons through the power of induction. For this project, you'll need an inductive coil set, a 9-volt AC adapter, and a USB connector. We have these snap together dealies in the Adafruit store, but you can always use an extra cable you have lying around. The circuit has two parts. This one gets soldered to the AC adapter and then secured to the surface where you place your bag. I'm using this shelf at work where I always put my purse when I come in. I protected the circuit with a little bit of heat shrink tubing and then taped it to the shelf along with a few magnets for precise alignment. The two coils need to be three millimeters apart and coaxial for most efficient energy transfer. Solder the other coil circuit to a USB connector and connect it to your phone. You can follow the circuit diagram at the complete tutorial for this project on the Adafruit Learning System. Test that your charger works with a multimeter before closing up the USB connector and embedding the circuit in your bag. Every bag is different, but this one has a flat bottom with steel feet which will catch my alignment magnets perfectly. I had to use a seam ripper to open up the very bottom edge and slide the induction coil underneath. Some phones have more finicky charging requirements than others, so if the induction coil set doesn't work with your phone, you could always charge up one of these backup battery packs instead. Subscribe to the Adafruit channel on YouTube for more wearables projects and tune in each Wednesday for our live show with me, Becky Stern. Okay, and we're back. Cool project. It did happen. Yeah, no, you did it. Um, one of the things I like about this project is um, it's something that people can do with stuff they already have. Mm -hmm. um, we have some uh, components right away, and we specifically got these uh, in, 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 uh, chargers to do stuff like this. Yeah. Um, speaking of, by the way, that's what the code is for. Induction. Induction. Ten percent off everything you need for a store, including the stuff that we were about to talk about. So, what is this? This is the USB connector part. So. Um, you'll find the tutorial on the Adafruit Learning System has these close-up photos of how to hook up the USB cable, but it's pretty easy. Uh, we have these little connectors in the store, so if yeah. you don't want to like hack a USB cable um, and have like a big chunky solder joint in the middle of it, yeah. in the middle of the cable, you can just make your own connector um, by soldering on the end. And then I found an upholstery needle, these curved needles you get in the upholstery store or in the heavy fabric section of your fabric store, yeah. um, handy for sewing my bag back together, but you know, maybe your bag is different, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Next uh, material spotlight. We're switching it around today. We're doing yeah. material spotlight first. It's okay, folks. There's nothing wrong with your YouTube. Do not, <laughs> do not adjust, adjust the slider. <laughs> okay. Heat shrink tubing. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. Wow. Yay. You got a. Do you guys not love this stuff? Because you're about to. Bag of tubes. Yeah. <laughs> um, heat shrink tubing is this cool plastic stuff that gets smaller when you heat it up and you use it to protect all of your electronics. Are you ready for some live heat shrink tubing? Yeah. On, this is the first time. In internet history, that someone's <laughs> live broadcasting heat tube shrinking. Really? No, maybe. Come you on. know what? Lady Ada did on an Ask an Engineer thing. And I think I've probably done it on Make Live before. Like, it's a pretty common thing. Not right. like as a segment. All but right. This is the fifth time <laughs> this has been done. Official. This okay, you want to go time. to the overhead? Yeah. <laughs> it's, the, it's the fifth time. All right. It's one of the times. Okay. So here I have one of our induction coils. I've already soldered it um, to the AC adapter, which is what's on the other end of this black cable over here. 
And um, before, the, the hardest thing about heat shrink tubing is remembering to put it on before you solder. Yeah. Because you'll solder your joint, oh, I forgot to put the heat shrink, and you can't put it on after, usually, because you have big, chunky things connected at either end. So I put, um, this is the power and ground, and I had to solder each one, and I put on a tiny piece of heat shrink on each wire first. So that's what this red and this white one is. And then um, also on this end, I put a, a bigger piece of heat shrink tubing that's going to go over both joints. So that's extra fancy. You can get away with just these two, but. Okay. Um, I'm gonna, so you just, uh, I soldered these like end to end. You just slide the heat shrink tubing over the joint. And tubing comes in different colors? Yeah, we have it in Adafruit Black in yeah. the store. Um, but I'm still working through this like really big um, container that I got at Fry's yeah. Electronics like back in the day. Yeah. That's all different colors, including clear and black and whatever. Yeah. So we'll, I guess at some point maybe we'll test out and see if there's any differences in the colors and like does it matter? It's, it's, I just whatever. I, mean, I just it's what I have at my desk because yeah. like, because I, I use the heat shrink pack we have here. Yeah. And, uh, since I primarily use smaller diameter, yeah. I'm already out of the smaller diameter. Yeah. If folks think um, a multicolored pack would be useful, we'll look into it. Right now, we did a multi-size pack. Ooh. Yeah, which is... Post up in the comments if you want multicolored heat shrink tubing. Yeah. This little plastic thing is pretty nice. Anyway, so I'm using this um, heat gun, yeah. which is specially designed for this purpose. It's for melting heat shrink or shrinking heat shrink tubing or starting like a wood stove fire. Yeah. Um, but you can also use a lighter if you are comfortable with fire. If you're yeah. working with kids or whatever, this is the safest thing because it's got protection all the way to the end. You can't, it's really hard to burn yourself. I'm going to turn it on, it's going to make a little bit of noise and it's going to shrink this heat shrink tubing and then I'm going to go ahead and straight away do the bigger one too. Okay. It's hard to see the smaller stuff shrink. Yeah. So I think the bigger one is going to be more obvious to you. So you put that on there. In future versions of YouTube, people's homes will be getting hot when you do this. It'll You'll have feel the warm breeze. Yeah. Yeah, it's a new technology. Out. Oh, I see. So that you can see that it it shrinks based on heat. Oh, that's cool. Normally, people think things expand with heat, but this stuff shrinks with heat. Cool plastic. Okay. And then my um, the thing is like not even really that hot at the end. It has a little stand, yeah. and my cable is now out of focus. But it's you know it's done now. Yeah. Okay. And then. Um, I also, we also in the store have clear heat shrink tubing um, that's food safe. Okay. I'm gonna yeah. get the focus back on the camera. Yeah, you can bring it up closer to the camera. Don't mind pretty nails. We will soon. Have a this is a temperature sensor, the temperature sensor we have in the yeah. in the store. Oh, come on, camera. And um, the oh, food, it's got the food safe heat shrink tubing um, over top of it, so that you can like put this probe. All right. Just over fail on it for a second, right? Or click off it and click back. Yeah, overhead's not co cooperating. Oh, sad. I'll just Hi, show you here. We're in focus. Um, this is just we'll the. See if this is just get back over there. This is just the um, temperature sensor we have in the store with the food food overhead, safe. You're done. Heat go shrink home. tubing on it so that you can put it down into like your brewing beer or your um your like fermenting beer to monitor yeah. its temperature or whatever. Um, so make sure if you're using a f if you want a food safe application, you get the food safe stuff we have in the store. Otherwise, this multi-purpose um, pack of heat shrink is for you. Yeah. Overhead camera. So did I miss anything about heat shrink tubing? I mean, it's awesome. It's great for um, it's great. this other half of the cable. I like wanted yeah. to make the Let's wires longer. Oh yeah. Let's try this again. I don't Come know. on, you can do it. It's not gonna be wet. No, it's it's had, just, it had too much to drink or something. It's just like uh, sorry. I needed to get it a cup of coffee too. I was not told that is not in our pre-flight checklist. Anyway, mm -hmm. on this, I made a longer USB cable for the this other half of the induction set, and okay. it um, I used like little pieces of heat shrink tubing along the wire to make it more um, of a single wire instead yeah. of two different ones. That's great. That's cool. I'm going to shrink these right now, too. OK. We're going to move on to the next segment. OK, right? yeah. Well, um, within um, our segments, we now have component of the week. OK, sorry. I had to finish preparing today's component. Yeah. All right. We're back. Wait, we need the overhead. I know. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll leave it on there. I think one of the things that we could do in the future is put a, a pattern. I think when it sits on the white, you can also turn off the, the, the lamp for a sec. Oh, there you go. You're back. Follow the focus down. <laughs> you can do it, little camera. OK, we've yeah. got it. All right. I think the big white space is what. We should put down the it. Adafruit wallpaper. We, we have some of that. I think that right. might work out. These are the induction coils this, week, this week's 
pro uh, component of the week, and they are featured in the handbag video you just saw. Yeah. So there's a tutorial for that, but also I'm just going to prove to you by showing you live that it totally works and is awesome. Yeah. This one over here that we just heat shrank is attached to, I've got it on this little um, coil holder so it stays in position. It's attached to the AC adapter that's plugged into the wall. And then this other cable over here, I have soldered to um, a USB connector. And I'm going to plug that into my phone. Okay. Here's my phone. You got a phone. Okay, you got all the pieces. So if this works out, it should be able to charge your phone magically. Or as we like to say about can here. Can you get rid of us so I can see oh, the yeah. phone? Goodbye, us. Or just regular really through science. Grimy, or should I? Let's clean it a little. So it's still like a ooh. That's great. <laughs> my phone looks like I totally just push it all over my face all the time. Right. That's a little better. <laughs> um, and that, so when I put this coil within three millimeters and coaxial with the other coil. Oh. Did look you that. see it? Do you see that. it's charging my phone? Science. Yeah, now it's charging. That's cool. Also, there's my dog. So when I move it, not charging? Not charging. 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 You can do this all day. Not charging. And I did when yeah. I was filming. And you can put materials between this. Yeah, like wood or plastic or fabric or, you paper. know, like paper. Yeah. Um, they, purses. Purses. They do have to be um, three millimeters or closer for optimal power transmission. They can be for, like, less amperage. You can have yeah. them far away, far, further away, but th really three millimeters. They should be really as close as possible to each other. Okay. Um, and um, yeah, it's great. Like you, you will have seen inductive charging in um, your electric toothbrush, probably primarily. Yeah. It's been in electric toothbrushes for a really long time. Yeah. Uh, where you put it on the stand and that orients the two coils. You yeah. could um, you could make with this a a toy like a, a learning toy or like a plush toy that sits on a base and like triggers sounds to happen yeah. or trigger it lights up when you put it on the base and there's no wires. Um, there's lots of fun stuff you could do. We have them in five volt, which is suitable for your phone, um, and three volt, which is suitable for okay. LEDs and stuff. All right. We also have a few photos. This is from when we did our um, project with it to show it works with an iPhone. Um, we have, of course, some photos from the first project. And then you wanted to show here uh, what exactly? Because calipers. Calipers. <laughs> we just have really nice calipers. Can we add a tools? I think we should add a tools segment to the show and swap Ooh, it in every once in a while. Ooh, that's right? a good idea. Because, like, I'm, yeah, we need, because yeah. the calipers don't fit in material or component. Okay. Yeah, tools. Okay. Look, this is how we do things here. Open source. <laughs> we plan the show while we're on the yeah. show. We're doing um, the next show right now. I'm excited. We, we, we are from the future. Yeah, we are. Um, so I like these things a lot. They're really fun. Um, okay. Build something out of them. All like right. Next up, questions and answer. You have questions. Becky has answers. The first question is, this is from Brandy. I'd like to use NeoPixel ring on the outside of a hip bag, and I've been wondering how well it would hold up. Someone suggested to try using acrylic casting to cover it up. Have you tried this before? What do you think it would end up looking like? Um, so. She's talking about acrylic resin that you see in like a lot of um, crafty jewelry projects where you buy like a bezel, you put in um, a graphic, and then you put um, resin, hard plastic clear resin over top of it. Uh, I think that would work great if you had a little frame uh, like they use, like a sort of a, a tray that's the same shape as the NeoPixel ring. Um, I think it could, it could turn out really nice because it wouldn't offer too much diffusion, but it would definitely make your LEDs uh, firmly secure and uh, but you know, I have wear the the Neo Geo watch, the, the yeah. this one, um, with the Neo Pixel ring, like you know, out hanging out, and yeah. I like banging on stuff, and it's it's pretty sturdy. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, if you were to whack it into like on your bag for wearing every single day, I think yeah. you'd want to protect it somehow. But um, I haven't had a problem with any of the LEDs. It's pretty low profile, yeah. and it doesn't really catch on stuff. So yeah. if you wanted to, to to resin it up, it would definitely make it stronger. But um, I don't know, like uh, some thoughtfully applied E6000 or like five minute epoxy would probably yeah. do the same thing and is a little bit safer for your lungs. Check our previous wearable Wednesdays where we go over all the glues. Oh yeah, there's an adhesive section. But resin's not really, it doesn't really count as it. Yeah. But resin's a lot nastier than. It's glue-like. It's glue-like, but it's so bad for you. Yeah. If you do any resin stuff, please do it outside. Yeah. Not just in a well-ventilated room. Next up, is it possible to use an Arduino GPS module and buzzers to make a compass? Uh, you need a compass to make a compass. Yeah. Um, the GPS alone, so I mean, yes, the, Geo, the Neo Geo watch um, uses a GPS module and a compass module in yeah. order to get your location and heading. Um, but the buzzers, if you look at a project called the North Paw, right? Mm -hmm. North Paw has, um, 
It's like an anklet, and it has vibrating motors around yeah, it. Yeah, these buzzers inside. But I think he's talking about, this is a question from last week, I think he's talking yeah. about the vibrating motors. Oh, the motors. vibrating motors. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think he's talking yeah. about, when he says buzzers, I think he's talking about vibrating motors. Yeah. Because um, they're like the pager motors inside yeah. your phone. Yeah. Uh, that, the North Paw project is open source and, and shows you how to make a thing that, like when you come out of the subway or whatever, it vibrates in the direction of north. But you need a compass module. You can't just use the GPS to know which way you're facing. The GPS mm -hmm. can know which way, like our GPS jacket project, it gets your heading after you've been moving for a while, it like looks at what direction you're moving. But if you're standing still, the GPS doesn't know your orientation. Yeah, and that's yeah, why yeah. we added a compass, the compass module, module to the to the watch. Yeah. So that it would know both where you were and which way you're facing. That makes sense. Okay. Next uh, this is from Paul. What parts could uh, wood could be used in to create a soft glow inside a hoodie? I have. I don't know. Have you? Are you subscribed to our YouTube channel? It, lo it looks like you are because you commented on YouTube. Maybe yeah. you should check out our EL Wire hoodie project with the EL Wire up and around. Yeah. It's a nice soft glow. Um, but if you just wanted it in the hood, um, you could also try EL tape, which is a little shorter. It won't yeah. go like all the way down the zipper. It could just go in the hood, and that's a very nice soft glow too. Yeah. You could do a few things. You could put the uh, strip inside of like uh, white fabric. And that would diffuse it nicely. You can also put it in some type of sleeve and do that. You can do EL wire and, and tuck it in. It all really depends. Like hoodies, like sometimes they have ribbing or piping, and you can yeah. tuck stuff behind it. We have the, the EL that you can sew in. Mm -hmm. And once it's on the inside, and if you look at like Tron, they just put like the, the, the latest Tron that is. The, all yeah. they did is put a little EL inside, and it, the glow comes out of the sleeves. Really, right. really nice effect. And, the, and it, it's still not common, so it doesn't look like cheap and easy. You know, like the shirts with the like microphone, like with the, the to have the thumpa thumpa like equalizers. Those yeah. kind of look cheap because because everybody has them. And it's a t-shirt. It's a t-shirt. Yeah, this is a nice effect. So you could you anywhere you add it, um, it'll look really nice. And as long as you don't see the the tape or the right, stuff so itself. you can point it kind of like if it's eel tape, you can direct it sort of back, yeah. so you get that glow inside, um, or you can fold the fabric around it, um, and mm -hmm. you can also yeah use like a strip of NeoPixels inside a sheath of fabric or. Yeah. Good luck and show us how it turns out. Next, uh, multiple NeoPixels on a Flora. The question is, how many NeoPixels can safely run off a single pin on a Flora? How many pins can we use to run lines of NeoPixels? Thanks. This is a question from the forums. It's such a common question that I figure we have to answer it at least once every six months. Yeah, we got this one. And where do you get your PCBs? <laughs> you get oh, I don't get asked that very often. Yeah, I do. They'll say, where do you get your PCBs? Like, it's not even hot. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, the answer to this question is really like as many as you want. And the answer is because you're not actually powering um, the, the LEDs through the pin on the Flora. You're telling, the Flora's pin is telling the pixels what color to be, but they're getting their power straight from the VBAT pad, which is connected directly to your power source. So as long as you have adequate power, um, you can power several hundred NeoPixels without a problem on a single um, bus coming from the Flora. Um, if you're working on sewable pixels, you might have to splice in multiple batteries down your line. Um, or if you're working on a piece of NeoPixel strip, you can add another battery to the end to make sure that you have nice dispersion of power. Um, the other part of your question is um, about how many strands, how many pins can do NeoPixel strands. Right now, um, D6 and D12 are the two approved um, data pins for yeah. NeoPixels on the Flora. Um, and we have made a pair of suspenders that use both at once. Yeah. Two instances yeah. of the NeoPixel library and one sketch. Check out that tutorial at learn.adafruit.com. Yeah. And uh, the, the suspenders are actually right here. Well, that's that's the one with one strand. But the one there's another. Strand. John Janeer has a pair with two strands. Yeah. He actually, he actually wears them out. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Okay. So, so the answer is lots and lots and yeah. two. Okay. That is the um, show for today. We have a Giveaway. What is the giveaway? Becky? Oh, right. Um, the giveaway is a set of the things to make your own inductive charging. Something thing. like this, perhaps? It's those and also the um, AC adapter oh, and wow. the um, USB clippy dealy. Okay. I put them all in this box. Someone stop her before she gives away the whole store. <laughs> <laughs> I try to keep the value of the prize around the same. That's it's fine. just, it's all the things you need to make the purse, except for some wire and some heat shrink tubing. Okay. Oh, no. Okay. So, right. so remember, if you have a question, you too can enter the giveaway. Just ask your question down below or on Google Plus or whatever, Twitter, Carrier Pigeon, and I will pick your name out of this hat and you will win a prize. Just like. Who won? Paul Eric Lagasse won. Oh, Yay. wow. What parts could be used to make a soft glow inside a hoodie? Yeah, and you know what? I'm going to send you the parts he, to make an inductive charging case. He's watching uh, the show right now oh, on YouTube Live. Oh, congratulations. Yay. Okay, um, Paul, you can 
save me some work and email support at adafruit.com to claim your yeah. prize. And um, I look forward to sending this out to you. This is cool. This is the future of television right here because you have people that answer, ask questions mm -hmm. on the internet. They come back later. They watch the show. They see get, their question get, get answered. Question and answers, and then they win something. Yeah. This is great. It's so cool. This I was is, uh, on future. Monday. I was in Baltimore speaking at um, Maryland Institute. Maryland. Um, shoot. Maryland Institute Maryland. College of Art. Yeah. And um, one of the students there had won our last week giveaway. Mm. That's cool. And you, then you get to meet the prize winners. Uh huh. That's neat. In the future, maybe we'll just like send the file and they'll just print it out or something. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, I'm reading a book now, um, A Cello Rondo, and it talks about like how like these two people are in a hotel room and like they blah 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 and they just like printed out this thing from the hotel room's 3D printer. See, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody. Don't forget the code is. Induction. Induction. 10% off everything in the Adafruit store in the floor and wearables category expires tonight at 11.59 p.m. Thank you, everybody, who's been watching the show. The show's working out great. Lots of folks watch it each week. Yay. Um, we're really happy about that. Um, tell your friends. Subscribe to the YouTube channel so you get a chance to see all the stuff. We've got a show next week. And oh, there's I have a couple an exciting times. announcement about oh, next right. week's show. Oh, right. You do. Show. You do. Next week, um, Leslie Birch will be co-hosting the show. She's the winner of the Element 14, one of the winners of the Element 14 yeah. uh, Flora Challenge. She made the light up umbrella. She's yeah. going to be here hosting the show with me yeah. next week. So it should be um, a little bit intolerably high energy. Yeah. I'll be off to the <laughs> side trying to make sure the energy doesn't escape. <laughs> sure we're all going to keep it on camera. Telling us to sim it down now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was up here and you did down here. So, okay. So thank you, everyone. We'll see Thanks you online, and we'll see you next week. See you next week. Bye-bye. Have a happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Yeah, happy Turkey Day. Bye. Make something and share it. Thank you.